Today in the Pipeline Vlog, we talk Evergreen Comics. Where are they? What happened to them? Why can't we make new ones? Over the weekend at San Diego Comic-Con, uh, Jim Lee discussed how DC wants to be more Evergreen title focused. Sounds like a good idea. What does it mean? Well, an Evergreen title is the one that sells consistently month to month, year to year, over a longer course of time. These are your Watchmen's and your Dark Knight Returns. These are the books that last on store shelves forever and that retailers always want to have one on hand of because they'll sell a copy every month at least. And the problem is we haven't had too many new evergreen titles in the last 10 or 15 years. You've had titles that sell really well over a long period of time and, and Saga Volume 1 and, and The Walking Dead Volume 1 are probably both there. Ten years from now, will either of those two titles be evergreen titles anymore? I don't know. It's possible. Uh, Civil War, Marvel's crossover uh, event, probably considered an evergreen. I'm not sure what Marvel's numbers are on that, but that seems to be the big one. Of all the Marvel crossovers they've done in the last 10 to 15 years, that's probably the one that most people will cop to actually liking. Maybe Avengers vs. X-Men would be selling well. I'm not sure if anyone cares about that one anymore either. But there haven't been that many Evergreen titles. And when you think of Evergreen books, they're older than 10, 15 years. The problem with this is the idea that you can create an Evergreen title from scratch. It's kind of like the way corporate America and, and so much of Silicon Valley talk about innovation. How we have to plan for innovation. How we have to create a, a place of innovation and a mindset of innovation. And how we're going to schedule innovation for next Monday at 9 a.m. It's going to be brilliant and we're going to make lots of money. It doesn't quite work that way. Innovation is more of a, a process than a goal. You, you get something that's innovative usually by going outside the system. I mean, Watchmen was not a DC crossover event. It was a 12-issue limited series that Alan Moore and David Gibbons did kind of off on the side. Uh, they created it, it stood on its own, and it happened to hit really big and, and stick around for a while. Batman The Dark Knight Returns, again, a miniseries Frank Miller did, not inside any monthly book, but as a process on its own in a different format, the prestige format. Uh, it was a special format with, with special, and I'm sure, or lack of editorial guidance. He was a creator who was allowed to go free and create what he wanted. And he created something great. And I think part of the problem with creating an evergreen title these days is everything is so micromanaged. So, so many things are editorially managed. How can you create a book that people want to read forever and ever when everything is a product of its specific time and was dictated to its creators by editorial? Or it was hashed out over multiple editorial meetings looking for ways to cross over with everything else. Here's another issue. When you have a crossover event, these days you get to the point where you have two different collections that come of that, which probably the publishers like. You have the first collected edition, which is the miniseries at the heart of things, whether it's six issues, eight issues, if it's Marvel, then it becomes nine, then it becomes 10, maybe 11 if it runs late, or 12 issues, you have that one collected edition. Then you have the omnibus collection, which collects all the other books that fed into the main crossover event. And a lot of times that main crossover event doesn't always make complete sense without reading all those event books that feed into it, all those separate outside monthly books that did special issues that tied back into the main event. So now you have to buy the omnibus book, and then you can have the argument over how do you create that omnibus, omnibus book? Do you create it in the order you're supposed to read it? Uh, what is the correct order to read it in? Sometimes you don't always know. Sometimes it feels like the creators don't know. But then you have two books fulfilling the same one function, and neither of them feel important enough to stand on their own, and would that ever be an evergreen title? Can you have an evergreen omnibus? Maybe with, like, you know, Claremont Burn X-Men you could have an evergreen omnibus. But I'm not sure... <laughs> Here's another point. Some evergreen titles are from regular ongoing series and they're from long-standing teams or teams that lasted a while that doesn't happen anymore and that's the topic of a video we're going to do also this week about how we manage to do career management for artists now 
that negate any of the possibilities of any of the best-selling titles or collected editions that we would expect to have. But that's that. So I agree with DC. I agree with Jim Lee. We should have more evergreen titles. That would be great for the industry, for readers, for retailers, for the publisher, all of that kind of stuff. I'm just not sure that you can plan to make an evergreen. Or that the two companies, especially Marvel and DC, are set up to create such a beast. You think they'd want to because it's perfect. You create once, you design once, and you just publish and publish and publish and keep selling and selling and selling. But it's kind of tough to do that with the, uh, the systems they have in place these days where everything has to be controlled from the top so much down. And, and who wants those things? I hope DC comes up with some evergreen titles. That would be good for everyone, including me. I like those. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll do this again tomorrow. Don't forget, please subscribe below. YouTube, subscribe. Thanks. Uh, tweet me at Pipeline Comics, and I'll see you again real soon.